So I've shown you how to check out the project from GitHub. And in this lecture, what I'm going to show you is how to flip between the different branches that I've created in the repository. So you can follow along with me as we're coding along in the course, and then also just flip to the specific branch if you just wanna skip forward and not follow along. And I'm also gonna show you how to compare your code, the code that you've written, with my code, my correct code. So if you're following along, then you can easily find out where perhaps you might have gone wrong in your code just by comparing your changes to my proper branch code. And I'm only gonna show you for the rest of this lecture, I'm only gonna show you how to do the rest of this with VS Code. There are many, many different editors out there, many, many different IDEs. Um, I won't be able to show you how to, do, how to do this with all of the IDEs, but if you understand your IDE very well, you'll be able to mirror the same functionality inside of it. I'm just gonna show you inside code. So we're gonna go through a 10-step plan, a 10-step plan to migrate an AngularJS application. Now, if you wanna follow along with me on lecture one of step one, you wanna check out step one, okay? So step one is the starting point of step one. Once you complete all of the code that you're supposed to do for the step one, the code should look like the code in step two, okay? So to begin with, the first thing you would do is you would check out step one, and then you would just carry on developing and coding and adding functionality. So perhaps, let me just add something here. You might add a, a, a hello here at the top of the index.html file. And you can tell you've got an edit from the branch because there's a star at the bottom. Now you've gone through the whole of step one and you just wanna see, just to make sure that your code that you've written for the step one mirrors my code that I wrote for step one. Okay, so to do that, the best thing to do is to install a plugin called Git Lens. I've already installed it, but you should make sure you've installed it yourself. It's called Git Lens, okay? So install that plugin. And once it's installed, you should see, well, you see something on the menu on the left-hand side here, a, a viewlet, and you should also see a command in the command palette called compare file with branch or tag. So make sure to choose the git lens version. So git lens, compare file with branch or tag, okay? So then you can compare your file to step two. Now remember, if you're working on step one, the completed code for step one is step two, okay? So step two is the starting point of step two, so it means it's the end point of step one. So to compare the code that you wrote in step one, just to make sure it's correct, compare it to step two. So you can see here, it then shows a nice side-by-side -side view of the file just to see how this compares with that code in step two. Okay, and if the files match nicely and perfectly, then you just carry on, you're, you're ready to start working on the step two code. If they don't, then maybe you can go and make the changes. Or if you just don't have time, if you kind of just followed along as much as you wanted to in step one, and now you're ready to start working on step two, how do you do that? Now, the one problem is, is that if you actually now try to check out just step two, it should give you an error. So here, it'll say your local changes to the following files will be overwritten. That's because you've made some changes and it's not letting you check out the next branch because, well, there's still changes on the on your machine and maybe you want to maybe gets a bit worried it doesn't it doesn't doesn't want to overwrite local changes so there's a couple of things you can do okay so one of them if you don't care about your code at all you can just go here and hit revert or click here and hit discard all changes so this will just remove all of your changes you'll never be able to find those changes again but once you get rid of those you should be able to check out step two another thing you can do if you want to just keep your changes is you can stash them. Okay, so you can do git stash, and then you can give it a message. So my changes for step one. That will store your changes in a git stash. I'm gonna go into what a git stash is. You can Google it and find that information. And then if you then once you're stashed, you can check out step two, and now we're on step two. And you can close this file out. So that's how I want you to work through this application. Check out step one, start coding with it, code along with me, add the changes as I'm adding the changes, run the compilation, run it in your browser, make sure it's working. If something's not working as you expect it to work from the videos, 
check your code versus the other branch, versus the step two branch. Make sure that everything that you've written matches everything that I wrote. Because more often than not, any issues which you have are just gonna be perhaps a few things that you've missed or perhaps a silly spelling error. And you can easily find that out by comparing your code to the code of the next branch. And then if everything matches, just carry on to the next step in the process. If you wanna kind of pause and leave your code as it is, then you can either delete it all by discarding it from the uh, uh, source control menu, or you can stash it. And then once you've stashed everything and there's no different changes, you can flip to the next branch here. And at the very, very end, if you remember step 10, step 10 is a start of step 10, the start of step 10. So the thing you wanna compare step 10 to is the finished branch. So finished is the end of step 10. So that's it, so now go ahead and check out the code and then make sure you've checked out step one before we start at the next lecture where we actually start going through the process of migration.